So the, the next step that we want to do is we want to go ahead and create an axial force diagram. Uh -oh. Axial force diagram. So we have a couple of ways of doing that. And uh, in this instance, I'm going to solve for it using the graphic method. So the graphic method is nothing more than a, a series of processes uh, that we know from equilibrium as we work from left to right through the diagram. Uh, we start with our five kilonewtons applied at A, which we can see looking at the diagram here that that puts uh, that portion of the, the member into tension. So tension in our course uh, has a sign convention of being positive. So we know that this is going to go up to a positive value of 5 kilonewtons. We'll label that there. Now there is no change as we move along the member until we get to the force applied at B, at which point it now we have a, an arrow to the right, which is eight kilonewtons. We know that an arrow to the left pushes our axial force diagram up or positive. So this is gonna move it down in the negative direction. So if we go five and we subtract eight from that, so I'm just gonna label that so we know what we're talking about is that this change here is eight kilonewtons. And that brings us down to a value of minus three kilonewtons. Again, we have a period of constant internal axial load until we go over here. The four kilonewtons pushes us down an additional four kilonewtons. Uh, brings us to minus seven kilonewtons. And that remains constant until we get to the end at D and we see the seven kilonewtons brings us back up to zero, which is what we would expect. If we didn't come back up to zero, then we would know that we had made a mistake somewhere along the way. I'll just label this here as four kilonewtons. And that's the graphical method. We'll see this process being able to move left to right through uh, the member repeated several times when we do shear force diagrams, bending moment diagrams, uh, and uh, so it works fairly well. It's a quick way to get through the problem.